Asus has just released the Zenfone 6, a smartphone part of a flagship lineup whose popularity has faded a bit in the more recent years. The Zenfone 6 is tasked with the challenge of getting the smartphone company back on the map, and it has every bit of a chance of doing so with this smartphone. It's got an enticing price and flagship specs, two factors which really make it hard to go unnoticed. So let's see what it's got and whether it's worthy of the title of the most affordable flagship. I'm Ricky with GSM Marina, and this is our review of the Asus Zenfone 6. Asus is a well-regarded brand among computer hardware and gaming enthusiasts, but it's fairly unknown when it comes to smartphones, so we were pleasantly surprised to see this beauty. The striking edge-to-edge -edge screen is the first thing you'll notice. It's 6.4 inches in diagonal, and it's protected by Gorilla Glass 6. It's an IPS LCD. Obviously, the price target didn't allow for an AMOLED, but it's still a very nice screen to look at. Sharpness is really good, and there's no contrast shifting when looking at it at different angles. Colors appear very vibrant, even though color accuracy is only average, regarding of which mode or color space we tried. The max brightness that we measured under our standard testing conditions was 455 nits. We did get the advertised 600 nits in Chrome and slightly lower numbers across the UI. Our experience with it outdoors was a bit mixed. Screen legibility depended on how strong the sun was shining, but it was mostly just fine. On the left side of the phone we find the dual SIM slot, which also has a dedicated place for micro SD cards. The standout feature on the right hand side is the special smart key as Asus calls it. By default, it launches the Google Assistant, but you can reassign it to do other stuff. It can even differentiate between single, double, and long presses. While you can't start an app of your choice with it, you can change the sound modes, take screenshots, and toggle the flashlight all with the same key, and it can be assigned other actions as well. The back is rounded towards the edges, which helps with the grip when holding the phone. There is no official IP rating on this phone, but we don't really expect it from this price range. The small fingerprint reader on the back is really fast. It wakes up and unlocks the phone as soon as you touch it. You can also set up face unlock, but since the cameras need to flip around to see you, it takes a little extra time. Even though it's not a slim phone, the Zenfone 6 doesn't feel too thick either. Snap on the case which Asus provides in the box, however, and the phone feels noticeably chunkier. It's also a heavy phone, weighing in at 190 grams. But it's a bit difficult to complain about the weight when there's a 5000 mAh battery inside. The Zenfone 6 puts all that battery capacity to good use, and it scored an endurance rating of 110 hours in our proprietary endurance tests. Best of all, we got 16 hours of web browsing out of it, and no other high-end phone can come even close to this result. For charging, you can rely on Quick Charge 4. The bundled 18-watt charger recharged 35% of the depleted battery in 30 minutes. A full charge takes about 2.5 hours. The main speaker is next to the USB-C port at the bottom, but the Zenfone 6 has a second speaker at the top for a nice stereo setup. The speakers are not particularly good in reproducing bass, but they are quite loud. We gave it an excellent score in our loudness test. If you enable the nifty smart volume feature, the phone will also adjust the ringing volume on its own based on how loud the environment is. We also get a 3.5mm audio jack, and once you plug in any headphones, you'll be able to access the built-in FM radio. Asus even bundles the phone with a pair of high-fidelity earbuds, but this phone can easily drive much larger headphones. The Zenfone 6 runs Android 9 Pie with a Zen UI 6 on top of it. This latest iteration of the Zen UI has a pure Android look and feel for the first time ever. Many of the features found in previous iterations of Zen UI, most of which were kind of gimmicky, are now gone. Now you can get all the features that Android provides by default, like digital well-being, the adaptive brightness which learns your preferences, and nightlight, so the experience is as stock as it gets. However, Asus engineers have optimized a lot of aspects under the hood, with the goal so that the Zenfone 6 feels as responsive and as fluid as possible. 
you get gestures for navigating the UI, both the Google Pixel Pill navigation, as well as the more popular swipe from the bottom type of gestures, which replace the navbar keys. Whichever folder or app you open, the icons are all easy to access towards the bottom of the screen, and so are all system pop-ups. Asus has added a bunch of advanced features as well if you're into that level of customization, otherwise those settings stay out of sight when they're not being used. This phone lets you customize the status bar icons so you can decide which ones you want to see up there. You can control which apps start up with the system or run in the background, you can clean the memory and storage, control app notifications, and restrict certain apps from using mobile data. Although some messaging apps already do this, the private listening feature allows you to listen to your voice messages in chats by putting the phone to your ear. There is a new screen recorder too, which allows you to record your actions on the phone's display along with your own audio voiceover. Asus has even added the option to record your phone calls, something not natively supported by Android Pie. The Zenfone 6 is powered by the Snapdragon 855 chipset, performance was great as expected. You also get a gaming mode which can block notifications to reduce distractions and you can record or live stream your gameplay. The phone would also recognize CPU intensive apps which prompts you to enable a Zenfone boost mode but turning it on didn't make much of a difference in our benchmarks. Asus proprietary OptiFlex system will reduce delays in opening apps when the onboard AI picks up your app usage patterns. It works in conjunction with Android's built-in adaptive battery feature, combining the benefit of both optimization engines into one. The flip camera is definitely one of the highlights of the Zenfone 6. It's motorized and makes use of a rather complex gear mechanism, so the stepper motor can achieve varying amounts of torque and speed during the module's flipping action. This design has freed the engineers from having to fit a front camera, and on top of that, that means great selfies. You can switch between back-facing and front-facing positions with just a tap on the screen in the camera app. You can also use the volume keys or the manual slider, and the camera app positions the camera in whatever angle you like. The phone attempts to retract the camera, or at least move it to a safer position, if it detects a freefall. Asus claims they've tested the module's durability thoroughly and it's good for at least 100,000 actuations. The camera modules Asus has integrated into the flip module are Sony's flagship 48 megapixel sensor with laser and face detect autofocus, along with a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle camera with fixed focus. There is no optical image stabilization, but you do get electronic image stabilization for video recording. The camera lets you shoot in the full 48 megapixel resolution, but it's at its best when producing 12 megapixel photos. By default, the camera shoots with auto HDR enabled, so all photos you see use that. We really like the resulting photos. They have nice colors, good contrast, very good dynamic range, and nice sharpness. The Zenfone 6 also has a more advanced HDR mode. HDR Plus Enhanced processes photos differently. In fact, Asus told us that it's based on the same computational HDR technology that Google is using for the Google Pixel phones. HDR Plus Enhanced does take a few seconds to work its magic, but the images we took almost always looked better. Thanks to an increase in micro contrast, you get a nice punchy shot while retaining the excellent dynamic range. We didn't see any ghosting or smeared moving objects, so the image stacking technology works really well. The phone also provided 2 times lossless zoom, which is achieved by cropping a frame from the middle of the camera's main sensor. When there's plenty of light, the zoomed in shots are actually quite usable. Regular low light photos from the main cam are decently detailed, but a bit soft and kind of noisy. Asus has an all new ultra night mode. It's able to even out the exposures across night scenes by brightening the shadows and restoring highlights proficiently. It also removes noise completely. However, despite the extra sharpening applied, these photos look a bit soft upon close inspection. While the nighttime shots were definitely not the best low light shots we've seen from a phone, they are nicer than the regular photos, so we enjoyed using the mode. 
Unfortunately, the night mode cannot be used with the ultra-wide camera. Speaking of the ultra-wide, its quality is not quite up to par by that of the main camera. Even so, as ultra-wides go, in daylight, its images are good with decent details and well-controlled distortion. In the dark, however, you'd be better off avoiding it altogether. When it comes to portraits, the Zenfone delivers. Subject detection is precise, the blur is convincing, and skin tones are pleasing. The portrait mode works equally well on non-human subjects too. One of the main benefits of the flip camera is that you get to take your selfies with the phone's high quality main camera, and you can even use the flash. As predicted, these are some of the best selfies around. There's a ton of detail, dynamic range is nice and wide, and colors are spot on. For some extra pop, you can shoot in HDR plus enhanced, which is especially useful in challenging lighting. Ultra wide selfies aren't as sharp on a pixel level and they quickly turn worse in even moderately dimmer light. Even so, the ultra wide will still be great for fitting a lot of people in the frame. This camera can shoot video at up to 4K at 60 frames. How's that for a selfie camera, huh? Video quality is great, there's plenty of detail and noise is kept low. We're liking the colors and the dynamic range is excellent too. And the video appears to be relatively well stabilized thanks to the electronic stabilization regardless of which mode you're using, all the way up to 4K at 60 frames per second. On the other hand, the ultra wide camera can only record up to 4K at 30 frames. The footage is sharp and detailed, but a bit noisier than what you'd get out of the main camera. Top shelf chipset tons of battery life, a nice looking display, and a really good performing camera with a unique form factor. There's a lot to get excited about in the Asus Zenfone 6. It does lack some flagship features like wireless charging, an official IP water resistance rating, and an in-display fingerprint scanner, but it comes with a unique flip camera, a 5000 lamp hour battery, a screen with super slick bezels, a customizable smart key, and the latest and greatest silicon from Qualcomm. It's an offer that's going to be hard to beat at an average price of around 500 euros. Sure, many of us agree that an AMOLED screen would have made the Zenfone 6 a bit closer to smartphone bliss, but even as things stand, this phone is an easy recommendation. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed this review, and let us know your thoughts on the Asus Zenfone 6. Leave us comments down below, like this video, and go ahead and hit that notification bell so you don't miss more videos like this one. I'm Ricky signing off for GSM Marina and thank you guys for watching.